Green YouTube, Captain Machine here, back for another video, and let's call it a new video. Let's call it a new series. Let's call it Captain Machine version 2.0. Because I've got a new set, I've got new jewellery, I've got a new outlook and goals, and I've got something new I want to show to the rest of YouTube and the world in general. So, let's call this the first video of May to come for Captain Machine version 2. So let's talk from the beginning. I get asked the question a lot, I suppose a lot of other YouTube contributors do too, how do I get into gaming? Now I'm not going to talk about the social ramifications of it, in terms of finding a group, getting together on a regular basis, how to play the game together, how to make judgement calls, how to role play. Those are topics for another day. However, we are going to talk about the financial implications because the honest truth is, RPGs and role playing in general are as expensive as you want them to be. Um, I may do a video in the near future with regards to zero cost gaming because it does exist, you can do it out there. Uh, however, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to start playing from scratch, literally, assuming you've got nothing to do with any of this, you've just literally clicked on this video because you want to know how to start, you know, want to get, and you want to know how much it's going to cost you. So, with that in mind, Armed with just one or two of these bad boys, £10 out, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to gather the resources you need to start gaming. So let's see how this goes. Okay guys, so what you can see in front of you here is the core rule books for the most well known in terms of pop culture significance RPG in the market, at least the newest edition of it. There is another edition coming out in the future, 5th edition or Dungeon Dragons next, but this is the current one on the market. This is what a lot of people think of when it comes to starting a brand new RPG. These books can cost anywhere from 20 to 30 or even some extreme cases £40. So a set like this could cost anything from 60 to 100 pounds quite easily. And a lot of games do this in some degree. Sometimes, most times they'll have a player book off to one side and then they'll have GM books off to the other side. So a player just needs to buy this, but a dungeon master has to buy the lot. Now in some cases they merge them together, like for example Pathfinder will take those two books, slam them together and then sell you this book separately. There are pros and cons to doing that, however it's it can be prohibitively expensive and we are trying to save money after all because we're spending just a couple of these today. So, an alternative is Savage Worlds Deluxe Explorer's Edition. There is a full hardback version of this, I would avoid it, it costs, it costs more money, it costs equivalent in terms of money to some buying something like this, but it doesn't, it contains exactly the same material as this book. This book retails for £6.99 or £7 if you want to round up and $10 in the US. It's 180 pages, complete, modular RPG. Full colour, nice and easy to understand, plenty of brilliant pictures and diagrams to explain how the game is played. And it can do everything. This can do fantasy, this can do sci-fi, this can do horror, this can do swashbuckling action, pulp. Everything you can think of is contained within this rule set. And there's very little hacking, as they call it these days, or modifications, as I used to call it back in the day, that is required to make it do that. There are other books in the line, but ultimately you can play the game with just this book and a little bit of imagination. So there is that. That is, in my opinion, the cheapest and the best game on the market for the price point that we're talking about today. In fact, I would still say this is one of the best games on the market at all. There are some detractors to that idea, but I'm a big fan of this. Next, of course, you're going to need some playing cards. These are my comedy oversized playing cards, which I picked up at the train station because I thought these would be really good for conventions. 
something tactile for players to hold on to, but ultimately it doesn't matter what size or edition you use, as long as the deck contains a Joker. Let me just see if I can find one in here. There we go. Because Jokers are important to how this game is played. Dice cards are used to turn initiative in this game. And in some cases, depending on the hack, also for other things as well. But ultimately, you're going to need a deck of cards. They cost you a pound, maybe two pounds, maybe one pound fifty. Next, you need some dice to determine your results, of course. Now, if you don't even have dice, you can find a brick like this, which contains a single set of coloured dice. You can usually get this for three, four pounds quite easily. Everywhere sells them. And then, that's a complete set right there. So you get your D20, you get your percentiles, you got your D12, your D8, your D6, your D4. And because the game uses what's known as a wild dice, which is an extra dice if you play characters and important NPCs, I recommend getting a different dice of a different colour, D6, and just have it with your set. Quite easy. Now, the game also has a Benny system, which is a method of tokens which determine additional effects you can play. In some cases, it activates certain abilities, in some cases, it gives you rerolls, in some cases, it allows you to soak damage. And once again, these are incredibly cheap to come by. I mean, these cost me three pounds in total. And admittedly, you need maybe a bit more than this. But poker chips will do the job, pennies will do the job. In fact, I believe one of the variants, which is Deadlands, uses poker chips exclusively, and the different colours do different things. But you'll have something in your house. No doubt, 100% that you can use to substitute for this if you can't find these. And then of course, when it comes to writing things down, a pad of paper. You can get these from most pound shops or dollar stores. And I do recommend for a GM getting squared or graph paper because when you're drawing things like maps or encounters, it's easy to understand the scale and the size of the fight or the area that you're trying to describe. It's also really good for writing as well when it comes to writing on material because you can put it in a concentrated format which makes sense rather than being scrawled all over the place. But any sort of paper will do, plain, lined, you know, hexadecimal if you want to get really weird about it. You can buy this for literally nothing. And then of course, a pencil. This is a mechanical pencil which I picked up from Dungeon Crawl Classics RPG when I participated in one of their demo games. I'll talk about that game in the future. But it never loses its point. Most of them come with rubbers on the end and you can pick these up for next to nothing at a pound or dollar shop. There is no reason why your friend local gamer store doesn't stop this material in its entirety and if it doesn't ask you why because if you've got a gaming store where you play games or buy games there's every possibility that when you show up you're going to forget to bring your pencil, you're going to forget to bring your dice, you're going to forget to bring your bennies, you're going to bring your cards, you're going to forget to bring your paper or even heaven forbid your book and you can easily pick these up so you can get all of this Less than two of these. So £20 will get you all of this. And this is everything you need to play the game. Thank you, YouTube. Have a good day.